In this video, I want to talk about converting your old FileMaker file in an FP7 file format to the new FMP12 file format that is used by modern versions of the FileMaker platform. Now in case I haven't mentioned this, the file format is the unique way that FileMaker saves the bits of data into a file. You can think of a file like a Microsoft Word file. There's a beginning and an end of the Word document, and in between there's all sorts of data that's in there. Well, FileMaker has its own proprietary file format, how it saves information about records and layouts and fields and things like that. So when we talk about the file format changing, it means how FileMaker has decided to organize the information that is contained within that file structure. Now for the most part, converting from the older FP7 file format to the newer FMP12 file format is really a snap. And I want to show you how this works. After we go through a basic conversion, we'll talk about a couple potential gotchas that you might want to watch out for. Now that being said, these probably only affect 5% of the people out there who are doing conversions. So it's really not much to worry about when converting from FP7 to FMP12. But if you have a larger database system, which is more complex and it's considered extremely mission critical, then it's something you want to pay attention to. Now it's pretty easy to get your files converted. All you have to really do is take your FMP12 files and make sure that you close your older version of FileMaker Pro. So if the files are on the server, you have to take them off the server and bring them down to a client computer where you can look at them directly with FileMaker Pro. So you take your old FMP7 file and you make sure that it's not currently running. Okay, step one. Step two, you're going to take that older FP7 file and drag and drop it to your new updated version of FileMaker. You're going to see a dialog like this FileMaker is going to ask you to convert the database. Now this is a one-way process. FileMaker is going to actually take a copy of the FP7 file and do the conversion and then kick out a separate FMP12 file. So the FP7 file will be preserved and out will come a brand new FMP12 file. That being said, that FMP12 file cannot be reverse converted backwards, right? So no going backwards with the conversion process. Now this newly converted FMP12 file will only be able to be read by a modern version of FileMaker, FileMaker 12 and later. Now just to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and check the box right here that says rename the old file, which will put the word old right here on it. Now it's important to note that the old file must contain the extension .fp7. If it doesn't have that extension, then your newer version of FileMaker won't necessarily recognize it as a file that it can convert. So even if you're running around with a file that works fine with, say, FileMaker 10 or 11, and it doesn't have that extension, make sure that you go ahead and manually add it on to the end of the file name. I'm going to go ahead and press OK, and FileMaker is going to confirm that we want to give this file a new name, and then we hit save and off we go. Now FileMaker is chewing through this conversion process, and the process will take a period of time to complete depending upon the size of the file itself, right? So if you have a giant database, it will take longer. You can see here that FileMaker is taking a bit longer to complete this conversion because it's chewing on our layouts. That's because in the file here we're converting, which is FM starting point, we actually have a large number of layouts. So it takes longer to convert more layouts. Pretty simple. Now keep in mind, FileMaker does a great job of preserving the look and feel from the old file format to the new file format. And in 99% of the cases, you won't be able to tell the difference between the old version of FileMaker and your newer version of the database. FileMaker does a really good job of converting the database and keeping the visual aesthetics really identical or so close that you're hard pressed to see the difference. Now once the conversion is complete, your newer version of FileMaker will actually open the file and display it. Now just to show you how good of a job it does, I can open the database here 
and here's my new version of FileMaker. And here is the old version over here, which in this case we're using FileMaker Pro 11. You can see that they're pretty much identical. In fact, I couldn't tell them apart if you asked me to. So now that you've seen how conversion works from an old file format to a new file format, let's talk about the areas you need to watch out for. If your older database makes use of plugins, and these are typically third-party pieces of software that you add into FileMaker that give you new capabilities, right? So like a plugin that can run credit cards, for example. That would be a good example. If you're using these, then you're going to want to talk to your plugin manufacturer in advance of performing the conversion to ensure that the plugins will still be compatible. Now, of course, you can always just do the conversion and try things out. Don't forget to install your plugins in your new copy of FileMaker Pro. Additionally, if you're a bit sloppy as a developer when you were defining calculations and you weren't careful about how you define numbers and text fields, you're going to find out that starting with FileMaker 12 and later, FileMaker is a lot more rigid about what it expects to come out of a calculation. So for example, if you're doing a bunch of math and you expect a mathematical number to come out of FileMaker, then you need to make sure that you've defined that as a number field. Whereas if you have a bunch of strings of text, then you're going to need to make sure that you define that as actually a text field and not just left it as a number field. Now the same thing goes for imports that are set up in FileMaker. In the older versions of FileMaker, FileMaker was pretty forgiving about the sloppy setup of imports when you're aligning the fields, etc., in the field alignment screen. So understand that if you have a bunch of important scripted imports that are done, you're probably going to want to review these imports in your new database to make sure they're operating as you expect. Now you can of course just wing it and hope that they work, but just understand that it's really advisable that you test out the solution to make sure it's running well. And this gets back to a broader idea about doing conversions, especially conversions for older databases. It's really important that you do a dry run or a test conversion and then have your users test out the new system to make sure it operates as they expect it to. Now this is one of the most horrific, boring activities a company can do. And companies are notorious for not doing this. And so they do a conversion, they maybe even do a test conversion, but no one tests the conversion. And then, of course, they say, hey, it looks good, it's great, it worked. Of course, no one tested it because no one wanted to test it because it's not part of their day job. Testing the software doesn't help them do their job any better, which unfortunately is the real attitude that you see most of the time. And so what happens is that people push that database then live and then they have to use it the next day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they find out that guess what? Certain critical capabilities don't work anymore and you get a lot of really pissed off people. It's not FileMaker's fault and it's not really the end user's faults. Their manager must make the case and force them to go through a testing process, which means if they have to all leave their desk and sit in a conference room for half a day without their phones, right? and test the software and press the buttons and have it do what it's supposed to do, then that needs to happen. So once again, this is for larger customer deployments with more users. And of course, another key aspect of this is that if you're doing the conversion, then make sure you're available the next day when the users are there pulling their hair out. If you have a developer who you've contracted with to do this work, make sure that they are available the next day. I've seen it where developers do a conversion like at three o'clock in the afternoon and at five o'clock in the afternoon, they decide the project's over and they're going on vacation. And that is a absolute recipe for disaster. So just understand that. A couple parting comments. If you use any custom web publishing like XML or PHP with your FileMaker server, you're obviously going to want to do a trial run once again and test to make sure that those web capabilities are running as you would expect. Additionally, as a note, from the FileMaker 12 to the FileMaker 13 release, the older instant web publishing technology was discontinued and replaced with the new WebDirect technology. WebDirect has gotten a lot better as the years go on, so it's seeing broader and broader acceptance. 
But as a result, keep in mind that if you're actually converting through this period and you were using IWP, then you're going to want to rethink how your users are using that because WebDirect is totally different. In fact, WebDirect basically mimics FileMaker Pro in a browser, whereas Instant Web Publishing kind of was a basket of doo-doo. So I don't know what to say about that besides that it had a pile of flies flying around it and it wasn't good. So you could tell I really like Instant Web Publishing, right? So once again, that being said, you should test and review to make sure things are going well. As a final note for our video, the staff at FileMaker have put together several good support pages that drill into this topic in more detail. I think I've covered all the important elements, but once again, if you have a mission critical conversion, you probably should check out these URLs and visit them to see if there's any new late breaking information.